God bless you. Thank you so much. Mighty beautiful. Mighty pretty. Mighty pretty. I want to ask you, if you will, if you would turn with me once again, according to the liturgical calendar, to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. I would like to read verses 10 and 11. In the message today, according to the Bible that I'm preaching from talks about the robe of righteousness. The robe of righteousness. Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at verse 10, reading verse 10 and 11, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with his with the garment of right of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as the bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring from 
spring forth before all the nations. Thank you very much. Thank you. The robe of righteousness. Ushers can re reposition yourself if you wish. This beginning of a new life in Christ. Thank you. Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus is the reason why we should gather on this month that pricks our conscience to celebrate. Isaiah is like a miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters is like the 39 books of the Bible, the Old Testament. The final 27 chapters is like the 27 books of the New Testament that declares the message of hope for each of us. This season of Advent of the Messiah, Isaiah reveals in these two verses after the coming of Christ, all of those who will Accept him will be part of his kingdom. We will be clothed with salvation. And we will belong to the body of redeemed. And we will live by a new standard. In a world where everything has gone sadly astray, we as Christians should be characterized by a joy and a certainty in spite of the conditions, in spite of the adversity that we presently experience. Listen, the children of Israel had sunk in their doubt and despair. With their symbol of ashes, Their spirit of heaviness. Consequently, their social gatherings and religious feasts were more like funerals rather than weddings. This text reveals to us that as we gather today in this place of worship, we should gather to celebrate. We should celebrate today as the worship service is graced by God's spirit. With clear heads, with open hearts, we come together to celebrate our freedom in Christ. Not only do we celebrate our freedom in Christ, we come today to praise God for his grace and his goodness. To give him glory for his marvelous works that he has done. In spite of how dim and how gloom things may appear, God is yet working. Please listen. Isaiah expounds upon the preparation for a wedding. The most joyous of human events to communicate what it means for the church to celebrate its freedom in the salvation of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Now we see the bride. We see the bridegroom clothed in garments of salvation of their purity of hearts because of the redemptive work that forgives their sin and cleanses their soul. It is now celebration. And this song that we sing today as it is pinned in the words, the robe of righteousness, this is the song of the ransom and the redeemed. Listen, stop shouting. It was sung by the Jews upon their return from Babylon. It is sung by believers covered with the robe of Jesus' righteousness. It will be sung in the kingdom age. Glory to God and to the highest. That if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, you're living today in spiritual jubilee. Listen. You've been set free from bondage. Thank God. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. Thank God I'm resting. That's a blessing. That's a blessing to be able to rest in the self-consciousness that you're free. Your spiritual debt to the Lord has been paid. Not paid on. Thank you, Reverend. It's been paid in full. The spiritual debt has been paid. And when you live through the salvation of God, you're living in the acceptable year of the Lord. Instead of ashes of mourning, you have a crown on your head because you're king and queen. You've been anointed with the all of God's Holy Spirit. You wear the garment of God's holy righteousness, which is Jesus Christ himself. And Isaiah is speaking on behalf of the remnant who are praising God for all he has done. And if you really want to be grateful, just think about what the Lord has done in your life. Sometimes sometime we want to just pull in more. We want more. We want more. We want God to do more. What about what he's already done? What about what he's doing right now? Not only in your life, let me tell you something. Sometimes we ought to get happy for somebody else. Sometimes we ought to rejoice when others are blessed. Stop, stop just looking at yourself and look around. These people rejoice that they was cleansed, clothed. And they, they were now a faithful garden to the Lord. And the hymn, the hymn that is being sung, 
is now a hymn of thanksgiving. And you talk about, they say, well, well Reverend, uh, uh, thanksgiving is past. No, thanksgiving is every day. You tell me, well, I'm waiting on Christmas. No, Christmas is every day. And when we rejoice in God for his grace and his greatness, it alters all of the things that tries to dampen the spirit, the spiritual climate in our life. So much stuff that tries to dampen our spiritual climate. Situations come to dampen your spiritual climate. People come into your life to dampen your spiritual climate. But the idea of it is God's holy grace, his mercy, clears the atmosphere so that his face and his presence is more plain. And I can rejoice in him. Oh, yeah. The bridegroom and the bride. <laughs> Read it. You don't have to just depend on what I'm saying. Read the whole chapter. The bridegroom and the bride illustrate the mutual delight of God and his redeemed people. Those formerly enslaved to various habits of sin are now brought to uniform habits of holiness. Write that down. The festival. Garments of salvation in the robe of righteousness are appropriate to be worn by the people whom God has blessed. Every wedding, whether you like it or not, is beautiful. Every attire is appropriate. Everybody ought to rejoice when it comes to the celebration of the bride and the bridegroom. And when a person comes to the Messiah for salvation, God clothed him with the righteousness of Christ and everybody ought to rejoice in the Lord. Bringing the joy of righteousness and salvation to the earth was the very purpose of the Savior's coming. Christmas. That's what Christmas ought to be about. Sometimes we inflict ourselves with self-disappointment because we expect too much when we already have everything we need. Come on, write it down. Tearing open gifts under the tree and rejecting the greatest gift that was ever given. I'm preaching good. It's the idea of it here. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. God gives us the wonderful assurance of salvation through the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The assurance that we will be saved from sin, saved from death, and saved from future judgment. Now, that's something to shout on right there. That I'm saved from my sin, I'm saved from death. And I'm saved from future judgment. I'm already suffering judgment. But I'm saved from future judgment. And if we would truly receive Christ as our Savior, he would flood us with the deep sense of being forgiven of our sins. If nobody else won't forgive you, remember Jesus did. It's the joy of being accepted by God. If everybody else reject you, through Jesus, God accepted you. 
If you don't think you have a bright future, thank him for eternal life. And he inheriting eternal life and he brings to us the flavor of Christianity. And everybody want to know, well, what is the true flavor? And I'm going to leave y'all alone. What is the true flavor of Christianity? I mean, what is it? What is it about Christianity that I could consider that's true flavor? Let me tell you what the true flavor of Christianity is. The true flavor of Christianity is joy. Everybody, everybody trying to be happy. You don't need no happiness. You need joy. And I'm going to tell you why in just a moment God's message to the world was brought to us by an angel at the birth of Jesus. He says in Luke chapter 2 verse 10, I bring you good news of great joy. Which will be for all people, not just some people. I bring you good news of great joy. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Listen to this. Stop shouting. Just telling people to be happy won't work. Don't worry. Now y'all done heard it too. Be happy. <laughs> no. The gospel doesn't do that. The apostle, look. The gospel doesn't do that. It gives us something beyond happiness. It gives us joy because it gives us hope. And everybody said, well, what kind of hope did it, it gives, Blake? It gives us hope against everything that beats us down day after day. All of the stuff that beats us and Pounds upon us day after day. Hope is the light that should never be extinguished in our life. And the apostle Peter called it joy unspeakable and full of glory. First Peter 1, 1 and 8. Read it. Joy and unspeakable joy. Let me tell you something. This joy is so great. That you can't express it. Have you ever been so happy, so elated that you can't express what you feel? Well, Y'all sitting there looking like you ain't never had it. Well, let me give you, let me get, try Jesus. Jesus would give you something that you can't explain. I believe some of the, the choir members to sing it, Carrie and some of the other. What is this? <laughs> That's got me feeling so good right now. <laughs> what is this that makes me want to run on anyhow? Whatever it is, it won't let me. I'm talking about something that the world didn't give you and the world can't take it away from you. That's Christ to the world today. And Isaiah wants to inspire in us such an admiration for such the Messiah has to give to each of us. He defines his ministry as helping people in trouble. You ever been in trouble? <laughs> helping people who've been in bondage. You ever been in bondage? Some of y'all didn't respond, but I got you on this one. Helping people who's suffering from heartbreak. Your heart ever been broken? 
Oh, so y'all don't know nothing about the God. Have you ever loved somebody that didn't love you? And that's somebody that you love. Oh, somebody done heard that song. Love somebody else too. True love these days. Show getting hard to find. It be, oh Lord. That away. Sometimes. Heartbreak. So the gospel announces that Christ has won victory over everything that's against us. He said, if I'm for you, I'm more than the whole world against you. I got to go. In other words, God saves us through Christ. His salvation has the joy of a wedding celebration. All of the fruitfulness of a garden sprouting with new life. Through Jesus Christ, God launched into this sad world and outpouring of joy that will lead the nation in all. And on this very day, listen, on this very day in history, at this very moment, Jesus is on the move. Listen, he's doing something for you right now that you don't even realize what he's doing. Reverend Watson was teaching us in the office how God works when you don't know he at work. How he works stuff out for you and you don't even know he's working in your behalf. If you don't know when to shout, this is a good shouting spot. God is on the move in our lives right now doing God's saving will over the world and giving us enthusiasm. i tell you what I want you to do. I'm, 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 I'm done. This is what I want you to do. This is, this is your dessert after worship. When you get home, I want you to read verses 2 and 3. In verses 2 and 3, it says that God transforms ashes into beauty. He turns sorrow into joy. And he turns despair into praise. See, I told y'all you didn't know when to shop. You done ate all of the dessert and still ain't got happy yet. Done had the entree, done ate the dessert and still want more. God will turn ashes into beauty. He will turn sorrow into joy and he will turn despair into praise. Let me tell you, nobody but Jesus can do that. And how does he do it? He does it through the salvation process of coming to the world to die for your sins and my sins. To hang on Calvary's crawl, shed blood for remissions of sin, lay in Joseph's new tomb. But then he got up on the third day with all power in the palm of his hand. I preach good today. What you need is not under the tree. What we need is what was on the tree. That's where the joy of our salvation comes from. Acknowledging what God has done, is doing, is going to do in each of our lives. If you have not accepted him as your personal savior,
If you're in despair, this is, this is a good time now to surrender yourself to him. You can come by letter, candidate about for baptism, or Christian experience.